Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of how to start competitive code in using Python. And in today's video, I will be discussing about a very important module named as collections. And this is a very commonly used module in contests because it has a lot of classes and methods which can help you achieve the desired functionality which you want in less lines of code and this is very important if you are participating in contests because you want to write your code as fast as possible so i will be discussing about this module in a moment but before that i would like you guys to subscribe to my channel and also hit that bell icon so that you guys get notification whenever i upload new content now you should really subscribe to my channel and why i am telling that is because i will be uploading similar kind of videos which will help you improve your problem solving skill and help you take your coding skill to the next level with that being said let's see what this collection module is all about and there are a lot of functions and methods available in this module but i will be discussing only the common methods which are there in the collection module and the first class which i want to discuss in this collection module is default dictionary and this default dictionary is a data structure that is used to store the data in key value pair so you guys must be wondering why can't we use the normal dictionary which is already there as a data type in python so to answer that question let me just give you an example so i have opened the jupyter notebook and you can also write the code along with me or you can just understand what i am explaining so let me first import the collection module so i will be discussing about the default dictionary and it's obviously is there in the collection module so let me just import it and the way to do that we will be using from keyword and from collection module what we want to import we want to import default dictionary now this default dictionary is like a big name so you can just give a alias to this name like something like dd now let's compare it with the normal dictionary we have so to initialize the normal dictionary we can use this curly braces and i can just put the element inside this so so d of one can be one here and this is fine and if i try to add set d of one i'll get the one value because this is key and this is value so corresponding to key one we have a string one and let's see what will happen if i try to do d of two now d of two is not there in the dictionary so if i try to run i'll get key error so we can handle this situation by writing few lines of code but we have something known as default dictionary which can take care of these conditions so let's see how we will initialize the default dictionary now i will be using same keyword as d and i have used the dd alias so i will use dd here and if i want the keys to be integer i can just pass int here and if i want to have a key as float i can pass float and so on so i want the key as integer so it will be int here and now if i try to assign d of one as one it should work similar to the normal dictionary now let's see the magic here so if i try to see d of 2 here i get the value as 0 by this you can see that the default value of each keys in the dictionary is in a slice to 0 and we don't get any error like key error so this comes very handy and i use default dictionary all the time and i will recommend all of you to use default dictionary now if i want to initialize all the value of default dictionary with some default value let's say five then i can have a lambda function and 
I can pass 5 here so if you see here if we try to print d of 2 and if you notice d of 2 is not there in the dictionary so we should get a default value and I have in this slide the default value here as 5 so if I do d of 2 I should get 5 now you can use all the other different kind of fancy things here but I just wanted to explain you how useful default dictionary is and I think you have understood the difference between default dictionary and the normal dictionary now next thing which I want to talk about is order dictionary and order dictionary is subclass of dictionary now by the name is sir you can guess what order dictionary is all about so order dictionary remembers the orders in which the keys are inserted in the dictionary now here the order is not maintained but what if you want to remember the order in which the elements are entered in the dictionary then you can use the order dictionary now let's see how we will import the order dictionary and obviously this order dictionary is there in the collection module so i'll just use the similar thing which i use for the default dictionary now O should be capital here because this is written like that and this should be ordered and let me just give it alias as order dictionary and this is imported and now it will be similar to what we have done for the default dictionary now let's use the variable as O to initialize the order dictionary and I will be using this alias but notice I am not passing something like integer because this is not the way it works you don't have to pass anything with the order dictionary and I can use something like one here and initialize the value with one and it will work so let me just see what will happen if I access element which is not there in the dictionary now if you see here we are getting key error because this element is not there in the dictionary and this is fine you can just write uh, if else condition and you can take care of this condition but order dictionary i just wanted to tell you that maintains the order of insertion so where can this dictionary be used so whenever like if you want to put element in a order like if you want to have a like a FIFO or LIFO access and by the way FIFO mean first in first out and LIFO mean last in first out so if you want to insult element let's say at the end then order dictionary will come handy or if you want to insert the element in front then also order dictionary can come handy but you won't be using order dictionary that often but it can come handy when you want to maintain or remember the insertion order so with that being said let's see your third class and this is a counter class so let's see how you will initialize the counter class and for that you will use the similar structure so from collections i will be importing counter and now let's say i have a list so i will be explaining what this counter class is used for so now let's say you have a list and it contains some numbers like one 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 Now this is the list so if you want to quickly get the count all the frequency of the elements which are there in the list then you can use counter so the way to do that I can have a variable like m and I can pass list with the counter variable and I can get the key value pair where key here will represents the element and value represents the frequency so one is coming in the list three time two is coming twice and three is coming one 
now you know how to count the frequency using counter but the most important function of counter is finding the most common elements in the list and let's say you want to find the most common two elements which are there in the list so most common two elements are one and two because one is having three frequency and two is having two frequency so i can use the metal something like most common here and it will give us the most common n elements So most common two elements are one with frequency three and two with frequency two. And let's say if I want to have just most common one element that will obviously be one and I'm getting one. Now we can use the most common function to also calculate the least common element in the list and we don't have a least common function but we can use the most common function here and the way to do that is something like this so we will be using slice in here and let me just explain you how we can do this Now these will be minus one and minus one. So if you want to calculate the first least common element, then you can pass here minus one and it will give us the least common first element. So if you want to have like two least common element, then you can pass two here and it will give us the two least common element. So by this, you can find the least common element by using counters. So I think I have covered all the things which I wanted to cover in this video and I will cover about DQ in the next video because I want to compare uh, DQ with list and show you what is the importance of DQ and why we should always use DQ then list. So with that being said, this is Ankur signing off and if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.